Hello everyone, my name is Napoleon Kaufman. I'm the senior pastor here at the Well Christian Community. And I want to thank you for tuning in for Times of Refreshing. God's Word this morning. Y'all fired up? Come on, open your Bible to the book of James chapter 1. And the title of my message this morning is Hearing and Doing. Hearing and Doing. James chapter 1 verse 21 on down to 27. says here in verse 21, it says, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness. Somebody say meekness. He says, receive with meekness the implanted word. King James says engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks in the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not, for, not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does." If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless or vain. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. You know, this Bible is a powerful weapon. It's a powerful tool, y'all. The Bible, 66 books in this canon. The Old Covenant is clearly outlined. The New Covenant, which is established by Jesus Christ, is clearly outlined. The revelation of God, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revelation of the Holy Spirit. The doctrine of man. I could go on and on and on. The doctrine of demonology. Everything that you need to know about life you can find in this book. It's full of revelation. It's full of insight. It's full of knowledge. It's full of wisdom. It's full of clarity. God through the word of God causes you and I to be transformed into his image. He uses it as a tool, as an instrument if you will, to tear stuff away, to add things to our lives. The Word of God has the power to come in and the ability to change your mind, to wash your mind from bad thinking. It has the ability to, to take a heart, a stony heart, and begin to chip away at the stone. The Bible says this, Is not my word like a hammer that breaks rocks into pieces? Every stony place in our, in our heart that, that needs to be broken down and broken up and, and tilled up, God, through his word, he uses it as an instrument to break th things down. God is not just in the business of, of subtraction, though. He's in the business of uh, addition. God, he pours into us through his word. He speaks to us daily. People, I want to hear from God. Open your Bible. God wants to speak to you through his word, continually wants to speak to you through his word. The word of God is such a powerful instrument. That's why the devil, he doesn't want you to read your Bible. He doesn't want you to get into the word. The world is skeptical of this. And the world tells you, you don't have to read that. They've, kicking, they, they've kicked the word of God out of the school systems. They try to keep it off the of colleges. You know, there used to be a time where 
you know, it was, just, it was just clear that when you went to a hotel room, there was a Gideon's Bible somewhere in there. Now the devil, he wants to, he wants to take the word away. Why? Because he knows the power of the word of God. The word of God is so powerful. But it does not have its true effect and will not perform in our lives if we don't learn how to, as saints, we don't learn how to take what we've learned and then put it into practice. And so James is very, very skillful in this passage of Scripture in helping us to see that God's not just into us hearing it. He wants it to be applied to our lives on a day-to-day basis. He wants us to, to go with it, to run with it, that it becomes active and alive in us. It has all this ability and capability. But what happens is if we don't allow it to function and flow in our lives the way God wants it to, then we're just hearing. We're just hearing. And this is one of the major problems that we see in Christendom. A lot of people know the truth, but they haven't allowed the word of God to take root in them where it's applied. And you look up and you say, that person has been transformed by the power of God through God's word. And Jesus has become alive in him. And so he says here, he says, therefore, verse 21, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. One of the reasons why a a person has a hard time receiving the implanted word is because they're not meek. They're not humble. In the sight of God. We're in the business sometimes. And this is a shame y'all. We have to stop this. We want to tell the word what it should say. Instead of allowing the word to talk to us. We get into a wrestling match. With the word. Instead of just embracing what it's saying to us. Now, we've got to rightly divide the word of truth and, and, and know how to go through the process of, of accurately interpreting the scripture and all those things. But when God speaks through his word, even though it is contrary to a, a particular view that we have, we have to accept that and then accept that view. We have to add that to our lifestyle. But what happens is people want to fight with God's word. And let me say this to y'all, you're never going to win. God's word is not going to change for any of us. It's not going to change. His word is yes and amen to the glory of God the Father. He's, what he says, that's what stands. And so for all of us, we have to see that God wants us to lay aside He says filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted or engrafted word which is able to save our soul. The word gets in us, then it gets rooted in us, then it begins to grow, then it begins to help to cleanse and wash us and get us going. And we literally, we literally begin to go through this transformational process from the inside out where the word of God is used as a tool to do that. But people, they fight with the word. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. You know, I know it said it there, but that's, you know, what's another interpretation? (laughs) See, that's just the King James Bible. You just talk from the King James, you know. And then we start fighting over the Bibles, and then we start fighting over this, and we start fighting over that. Instead of just saying, you know what? The Bible says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Now, the beautiful thing about what I'm talking about here, when you receive the implanted word, which is able to save your soul, which is able to deliver you, to free you, and all those things that comes with salvation and being saved, what happens is you start to realize that God, though he gives you instruction, he empowers you to do whatever he's asking you to do. So he doesn't give you instruction and say, go over there and do that. He gives you instruction and he gives you the power to please him. Amen. He infuses you with the power of the Spirit of God. So whatever he's asking you to do, that you have the ability through him to please him. There's no better, there's no better deal on the planet. God, you want me to please you. Yeah. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to give you my power so that you can please me the way I want to be pleased. 
So you're meaning that I don't have to do it in my own strength? Nope. You mean to tell me that, 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 that I just, my, you know, all my degrees and everything's not going to help me? Nope. You mean to tell me that, you know, everything I learned from mama and them and daddy and them and all these stuff, so that's not going to, nope. I'm going to please myself through you. There's nothing else like that. You mean to tell me, God, that all I have to do is be meek and humble and yield to you and you empower me to do whatever is in this book for your glory? Yep. I think somebody needs to shout on that right there. Can I have an amen, y'all? I mean, you can't, God, you're going to help me to do this? <laughs> yeah. This is what he does. But our heart is just to be yielded to the implanted word which is able to save our souls. And because this is what he says in verse 22, and this is what he gets back to. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. The greatest deception is self-deception. When we think that we're okay because we've heard something before, well, God wants it to be active and alive in our lives. He wants us to become what we're hearing. So we can't just be hearers of the word. We want to be hearers of the word, doers of the word. God empowers me to do. If I am just a hearer and not a doer, then I'm deceiving myself that I'm okay because I heard it. I already heard that before, preacher. Oh, here he goes talking about that again. I already heard that. How many times are you going to preach on that? Well, do you got it yet? No, I'm working on it. <laughs> well, you don't got it. So let's go over it again. Can I have an amen, y'all? And so what happens is we learn, we learn as a people of God to embrace it, and we get out of this realm of self-deception. I already know that. I've already heard that. I don't need to read the book of James again. I've read the book of James 20,000 times. How many times do I read it? Until it becomes alive in you. And then when it becomes alive, when you think it becomes alive in you, it still hasn't become alive in you to the degree that you, it needs to become alive in you. So read it again. You will never exhaust this Bible. Can I have an amen, y'all? You can read this story, and I tell you what, I have read, I can't even tell you how many hours I've read this Bible. But the thing about it is, every time I pick it up, it's like a living stream that just keeps on flowing. You always get a little bit more, something fresh when you pick it up. Can I have an amen, y'all? And then you, then you learn that there's no way that I could be deceiving myself thinking I got it because I know I don't got it. But when we just hear and then we don't do, then we start convincing ourselves. That's when we become hypocrites. We become just a religious person, an ungodly religious person that knows all the stuff, but it's not being lived out in our day-to-day -day lives. And we don't want to be like that. Can I have an amen? Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him, you don't want to be like that. We want to become living epistles, read of all men, that the word of God has gotten in me and now has lived out through me, and now it becomes my lifestyle. Does it happen on one day? Maybe not. But we are submitted and meek so that God's process can take its place, and we can become everything that God wants us to become. Look at verse 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. Look at verse 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, somebody say liberty. That word means freedom. The perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work somebody say work it's work y'all the christian life is work it is work it's work 
And people say, well, it's not about works, brother. No, listen. Faith without works is dead. Meaning, your faith has got to result in you doing what God's asking you to do to show that you have faith. You don't, you can't say, I got faith. And then God says, okay, go do that. No. What did you don't have faith? You just have, you just have a mental ascent. You've, you have knowledge of what the requirement is, but have you stepped over into the reality of doing what God asked you to do? Jesus tells the disciples, cast your net on the other side. Master, we've been rowing all night. We haven't caught anything. We're not going to do that. So now cast your net on the other side. They didn't show that they had faith when they just heard what he said. They showed that they had faith when finally Peter said, okay, and he cast his net on the other side. He cast his net on the other side we know the story, the, the boat gets just, I mean, the net just gets full of fish to the point that they're folded, the boat is just sinking and all kinds of stuff is going on. He gets up and he just bows to the Lord. Master, I'm an unclean man that you have let this happen, that this has happened. But this is what faith does. You step out. Can I have an amen, y'all? We say we have faith, but then are we stepping out? We say that we heard the word, but are you stepping out on that thing? And what happens when we step out, we show God that we have faith and we trust in him. And then God starts to show us the benefit and blessing of being not only just a hearer, but a doer in the word. I want to be a better husband. So Lord, empower me to do it and help me to do it by your strength. I want your word to come alive in me so I can do what you've asked me to do. We yield to that, we become meek, and then God starts to perfect that in our lives. Well, for all of us here, we gotta go beyond just being, um, I, I like what the Bible, um, you know, the Bible says this. It says, knowledge puffs up. Okay, so what happens is we can sit here and we can hear the scriptures, hear the scriptures, and then we get puffed up with knowledge. I know that. I read the Bible in a year. You haven't even read. And they'll start talking about the books they read, and they're not even, books they read in the Bible that aren't even in the Bibles. And you're, you're saying, well, wait a minute. What happens is we start getting puffed up and lifted up with pride, and we think just because we heard it, then that makes us special. I know I'm preaching today, y'all. I know I'm preaching today. Because some of us are going to work, and we, we, we know all the scriptures, but your coworkers are waiting for you to live it. Oh, I know I got some fucks. Oh, 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 my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I ran. Hey, don't leave, y'all. Don't leave. No, but this is what happens. We want to we wanna be doers, but what we have to do is see that if we're going forth, now watch this, y'all. If we're going forth and we hear the perfect law of liberty and we receive the perfect law of liberty, and we don't continue in it, then we're not allowing God to do what he ultimately wants to do in our life, and that is to make you like him. For you and I to be transformed into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ from glory to what? That's the goal. Well, hearing is a part of it. Now, how do I apply this in my day-to-day -day life? People see this and they see the power of it in my life. This is what God is looking for in our lives. He says, but the perfect law of liberty, the perfect law of liberty, true freedom is found in our obedience to God. Okay? True freedom is is found in obedience to God. God sets you free so that you can become yoked to him. 
Let me show you guys this. Hold your hand right there, James. Let's go to Romans, okay? Let's go to Romans. Hold that spot. We're going to go Romans chapter 6. I want you guys to see this. Because this is what true, this is what the law of liberty is all about. Romans chapter 6, verse 15 on down to 23. Look at this. Look at verse 15. It says, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin, sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine or teaching to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin. Somebody say set free. This is what the, the law of liberty does. When you join yourself to Christ, you give your life to Christ, you repent of your sin. Jesus sets you free from the power of sin. The influence of sin in your life. He begins to give you power on the inside to resist your old sinful nature. Okay? So now, when, before you met Christ, there were things that you wanted to stop doing, but you couldn't stop because you didn't have the power. When you gave your life to Christ, the divine nature comes in, the Spirit of God comes, and then now he gives you a willingness and the power to resist your own nature. I don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to go there anymore. I don't have to look at that anymore. God starts to empower you, and he sets you free from sin. Your sins are not just your actions. It is also a condition. All of us were born into sin and shaped in iniquity. By nature, we just do things wrong. Well, what's God's answer for that? Gives you a new nature. The nature of Jesus Christ. Gives you a new spirit. The Holy Spirit. He comes in and empowers you now so that you can say no to the, yourself. Say no to the devil and say no to the world. That's the beauty of Christianity, is that God empowers me from the inside out to live the way that he wants me to live. Well, I have to yield to that. But it's the perfect law of liberty, this freedom that God is looking for us to embrace. Freedom isn't getting on drugs. Freedom isn't doing what you want to do. Freedom isn't going to the club. Freedom isn't, I just want to do my own thing. That's not freedom. You're going to find yourself in bondage. And more bondage. Can I have an amen? amen? True freedom is God has made me righteous. God has made me loving. God has taught me to forgive. God has taught me to become more like him. And when I couldn't in my own strength before, now he empowers me to do it. That's why he says here. He says, verse 17, but thank God. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for what? Holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regards to righteousness. Listen to what he just said, y'all. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regards to righteousness. Sin had us bound up, and we just thought it was cool. Go, how many girls you got? Oh, yeah, I got five. How many you got? I got six, man. We cool. Where you want to go? Oh, man, we going to. Oh, you not going? Oh, what you mean you're not going to the club, man? It's Friday night by 1130. What about going to church? Oh, church? Come on, dog. We don't talk about that stuff. And a person was free in regards to righteousness. 
but they didn't realize they were slaves of sin. But when we give our life to Jesus Christ, he flips the script. He sets us free from sin and makes us slaves of what? Righteousness. Now it becomes our lifestyle to do what, can I preach on this this morning? Now it becomes our lifestyle to do what God's asking us to do. And now sin doesn't have any more power in my life and rule in my life. It's called the perfect law of liberty. God sets me free over here, but then he just doesn't leave me lawless. He makes me, causes me to be bound to him in righteousness. Can I have an amen, y'all? Look what he says here in verse 21. He says, what fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is what, y'all? Man, I tell you. I like to look back on my past just so I can thank God for where I am now. But I can't say that I'm proud of it. I can't say, oh, I'm proud of my past. No, there's some things, I, there's some things man. I wasn't always saved. And you look back and, man, man why did I do that? Then when you start reading your Bible, you start realizing that you start realizing the whys in your nature and the devil and the world and, and the influences and the decisions you made. As you look and say, ah, oh, okay, so now I see how this thing works. But those things, he says here, we look back on those things. He says, we're ashamed of the fruit of those things. For the end of those things ultimately lead to death. And I can remember in my life, let me, let me share this with y'all, y'all. I can remember in my life when I was just about to give my life to God. Seriously, like really commit my life to Jesus Christ. I was in my car and I was driving to Napa to training camp. And I was in my car and I was listening to this song. And I can remember in, I was just listening to this song which was like a gospel song, and it was like talking about God and making a decision for Christ, all this stuff. And I can remember having a wrestling match in my car. Like, man, I know I need to give my life to God and just surrender it all, just give it all to God and just do what God's asking me. I can feel it, this tug of war like going on in my spirit. No, you don't want to do that. That's just too much. You know, they're, and, you know, you don't want to be involved in church. Those people are soft over there. You know, and just all this stuff is going on in my mind. And that week, my teammate ministered to me on the field. And I went to my hotel room and gave my life to Jesus Christ and never looked back. And, but the tug of war. Thank you for joining us for Times of Refreshing. This program is a production of the Well Christian Community. You can learn more about our church and the various ministries we offer by visiting us on the web at www.thewellchurch.net or by calling our office at 925-479-1414. Or if you're looking for a church home or visiting the Livermore area, we would love for you to come by and visit us. Our service times are Sunday, 10.30 a.m. We are located at 2333 Nissan Drive in Livermore, California, 94551. For direction to our church, call us at 925-479-1414. Until next time, may Jesus Christ be highly exalted in your life, and may His Word bring you a peace that transcends all understanding.